Welcome to uh, this week's Learning Circle from Club Mojo Circle. It's great you've come to join us in the video. We'll get st started in just a second. We've got a fabulous presentation today on nutrition and, and taking a holistic view of how we keep ourselves healthy, particularly when we're in confinement. So let's get started and I'll just jump into the video. So first, we have two fantastic guest speakers, as I just said, and the first one is Audrey Archambault. Is that how you say yes. it? Oh. Audrey Archambault, yeah, very, Archambault. in a very flat way. <laughs> <laughs> so Audrey is a nutritional therapist and holistic health coach based in Aix-en-Provence. She believes in a mind and body approach with nutrition, lifestyle, movement, mindset, she likes to help busy women lose weight. Oh, don't we all want to do that? <laughs> but she also helps them keep it off as well. Fantastic. That's, that's the next challenge after losing it, isn't it? So we want to get leaner, say goodbye to bloating and cravings and boost our energy without depriving ourselves of or counting the calories or cooking for hours. Although I do like cooking for hours myself, but <laughs> that's me. <laughs> but it's all about helping everyone feel good and confident in their own skin and all the time. So thank you, Audrey. So take it over. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to attend the presentation, uh, first of all, and for kind of, you know, uh, learning more about how you can feel, um, you know, better and perhaps a little bit more confident in those um, gloomy times, let's say, <laughs> very, very special times uh, for all of us. So what my presentation is going to focus on is on how to avoid weight gain and stay healthy and mentally strong. I think uh, for all of us in different ways at different times, it's, um, you know, it's been, it's been a challenge, um, including uh, from a mental health perspective. Um, and so that is, um, something that I'm going to share as well. So basically, if you have been scared of, um, or you've put on weight <laughs> during the lockdown, curfews and easing off periods and then lockdown again, um, and who knows what, um, you know, next year will be, um, I think it's just, um, you know, we have to obviously evolve and, uh, and hear some of this, those tips apply to the period right now. Um, but also almost any time that you feel like, you know, your healthy routine is being uh, kind of uh, seriously uh, challenged or, you know, that you are um, struggling with um, kind of weight management or cravings or energy levels or stress, anxiety, or that you feel that you have some kind of negative emotions bubbling up. Um, and um, so these tips are going to be all about that. So nine tips that I'm going to share that will cover kind of nutrition, health, um, and um, and the mindset kind of little tips um, to help you feel stronger in your in your mind and literally cruise um, throughout this funny period. So uh, a little bit about me. So um, basically, I'm an ex banker um, that changed career. I love massage. I love chocolate, and I love CrossFit. I'm a big um, kind of. Um, fan of movement um, so but um, I'm not just um, just that um, um, so just um, to give you a little bit um, of background as to where I come from and why I do what I do now um, I uh, indeed so some of the keywords were here were like massage and, um, and banking so I worked in banking for about 10 years in uh, Paris and London and um, as you can imagine, I had some level of stress, uh, clearly higher towards the end. Um, and one way that um, I've actually been able to cope for, for so long, um, I guess, was um, because of, um, well, one was massage. I was literally getting a massage every Friday evenings. Um, that was the kickoff of the weekend for me. That was the reward. Um, although I was working sometimes at weekends, but I had basically adopted some unhealthy habits. I was smoking, uh, drinking, um, 
alcohol like in a non-healthy way um, and uh, I just did not have any social life any love life uh, little private life um, things going on um, and I was in my 30s and then I was like surely there is something else to life and so when I was escaping uh, to my massage um, every week um, it really uh, allowed me to actually think about you know, this is not where I want to be next. So um, I was just um, creating my next, uh, my next step, literally. And part of that was definitely having, um, you know, feeling, feeling better and more confident in, in my own skin. Um, and so I was like, well, why don't I do the things that make me feel good, which is all about massage, nutrition, healthy lifestyle. Um, so I started by actually um, retrain. So go back to school. Um, so train as a sports massage therapist. There is not really the equivalent here in France, but it, let's say it's kind of, um, it's a baby physio, a baby master kinesiotherapist, like you could, um, you can find here. Um, but I'm more on the massage side of things. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's a, short um, description, let's say. Um, and then um, that was great for me to put a, a foot into my new career that way while I was uh, studying for three years, um, my naturopathic uh, nutrition diploma in London still. And then um, once I got graduated, I was like, great, I have a great knowledge, you know, I know the do's and don'ts and what people um, kind of should do to, um, you know, prevent this ease um, in their body or, um, you know, help them to actually reverse some of the diseases that they or kind of um, health conditions that they have. But um, I quickly realized that what we were not really trained about was, okay, but if it's just well, like, if there was just one or two things that that person can do and actually there could be a massive shift for that person how how can i help them to implement it in a way that works for them at that point in their lifestyle and um how can they stick to it and so that was really the missing pieces that i had and so this is when i decided to qualify as a health coach and then i was like great but it does not seem to be enough um, because there are some people that know exactly what they should be doing, but they aren't doing it. And so why is that? And so um, <clears throat> then I started to, um, I guess, qualify onto, um, you know, other things um, such as NLP and just all about reprogramming the, the, the mind basically and help people to undo that, to unlearn that and then build new kind of, um, you know, uh, mindset and, and, and mental, um, I guess, uh, mind programs um, to kind of uh, reverse that. So it's just to explain to you that I have quite a holistic background. I'm also a lecturer in uh, the College of Naturopathic Medicine in London, but within all of that, I um, specialize um, in sustainable weight loss, in metabolism, sugar cravings, energy levels, um, some of the things are linked um, in kind of digestive issues such as um, bloating that clearly does not make us feel so good and confident in our own skin um, and kind of mental health um, aspects of it. Um, a, a lot of the, the, the female coming to see me to some degree have, uh, whether they are aware or not, um, some degree of kind of stress and anxiety, um, uh, including about their relationship with food, for instance. Um, so I'm going to kind of move on um, from that. That was just to explain to you why I'm going to talk about, why I'm passionate about what I'm doing and why I'm going to talk about uh, kind of um, nine holistic tips for you um, to um, avoid putting um, weight on and uh, know how to manage your weight better um, and stay healthy and mentally strong. So one of the um, first one, and again, sorry, um, you will have, um, you will be able to pause, you know, when you have the, the YouTube kind of, um, you know, presentation, there might be things that I will go a little bit quicker on because uh, Janine, please let me know when I'm good time in terms of timing. Um, You've got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes, that's fine. So tip number one is, is about sleep. Uh, like 
some of the things that I'm going to talk about, it's not really rocket science. It's not going to be like, wow, I had no idea about that. There will be some basic things. And the reality is that um, sometimes we just need to make things simple and do the things that the body loves. And definitely sleep is one of them, like good quality sleep every single day is, is one of one of the best self-care, one of the best things that you could do for your body. Why? Without entering into too much details and especially not uh, kind of technical terms, but there are a number of uh, recovery functions, even detoxification um, that happen while you sleep. Um, so the better, the longer that period is, um, as in, you know, good quality sleep as well, it's very important. Lack of good sleep can lead to um, can dysregulate your hunger hormones. Um, for example, I don't know if you've noticed uh, when your sleep has been up and down, um, you might feel a little bit more hungry or things like that. It can lead to cravings, um, weight gain, um, anxiety, you know, like reduce your ability to cope with stress um, and anxiety um, during the day, um, but also can all the time uh, lead to, uh, you know, a kind of sluggish metabolism, uh, which obviously prevents you from losing or uh, managing your weight in a in a in an easy effortless way, um, but also headaches and all of this. So basically, aim to. Um, I, I know it's been something uh, that has been a little bit challenging for me, just because obviously. Um, you know, your routines change, right, in, in lockdown periods. And for example, because gyms are closed, like my rhythm was quite, um, uh, you know, in, you know, uh, ordered um, in, in the morning. So now um, it's been a little bit of challenge to go to bed as early as I was before, because I don't have as much commitment, for example, in the morning. But just to just to say that it is, um, it's very important to try and keep the routine as much as possible, um, uh, you know, every day, because that's what your circadian rhythm, which is a sleep uh, kind of cycle, um, loves. And there is also one thing on that slide is that it, with regards to stress and weight and the link between it is your adrenal system actually recharges itself between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. And then the gallbladder will do, will do its little thing <laughs> about toxins as well. So if you're awake during that period, then it's definitely not going to help um, you know, your health and weight goals. Um, so it's just, again, basic sleep, but um, the reality is that many people um, admit that they actually don't always have a good quality sleep. Um, so that's one, one thing perhaps to try and, um, and improve. Um, tip two is, um, and, and, you know, um, I can answer a bit more questions during the Q&A. Maybe Lee will cover that, that bit in more details. You know, we're, we're here to support you, but for the purpose of tip two, it's just the general kind of um, advice of keep eating well um, and consider fasting if you want to manage your weight. Uh, like a, I'm talking gentle, easy, um, intermittent fasting, um, for instance, that can just be instead of um, freaking out about, um, you know, putting, putting on weight or um, thinking calories and, and all of this. Um, basically, the first thing to apply is to simply eat healthy and have three balanced meal a day and a snack if you need in the afternoon. And so the healthy plate typically, which I've not shared here, I could have, um, but it's basically, if you can remember, you have a plate in front of you, one quarter of your plate, let's say the palm of your hands, one quarter of the plate, proteins, half of the plate, veggies, um, another quarter for complex carbohydrates um, and some healthy fats. And that's basically an idea of what a typical healthy plate um, look like. And if you um, have that, you know, um, throughout the day, three balanced meal, um, that will what we call balance your blood sugar levels. Um, and this is massively important when it comes to, um, um, you know, um, your um, hormonal balance and, um, so that's, that's really important. Um, even if you were eating the same things 
um, then just by doing that, instead of reducing your calories, you would see that over time, it could actually be more of a winner strategy um, for you. So, and then you can add on a layer once you feel like you have um, three balanced meal a day is do a little bit of fasting, which is basically for some people that are not, um, you know, that think, oh my God, fasting means that I, I stop eating. I restrict myself from eating. It's not really that. I mean, basically when you sleep, you are fasting already already right because you don't eat um, so basically a very um, simple um, quick strategy um, could be um, for you to perhaps stretch a little bit more of the time um, that you don't eat between your dinner and your breakfast that can be as easy as that um, so I'm going to spend a bit a bit less time on the other slides um, water um, again very basic but again, most people admit that they don't necessarily drink their two liter plus um, a day. So that's something to really uh, be in mind. And I invite you actually to drink some water um, during this presentation. Just keep sipping throughout the day is the best um, strategy. Um, it helps you to eliminate um, anything, the toxins, the bad, uh, the bad bugs, the bad viruses, but also um, you know, especially if you move less, um, eliminate and have more activities in the toilet, let's say. So then next one, um, tip number four, actually, sorry. <laughs> still says tip three. Uh, move daily. I know that uh, Lee is probably going to cover that a little bit more, but um, this is definitely something that mentally has been a huge um, a life savior um, for a number of years, but certainly in that period, um, because, um, you know, and especially outdoor, like keep moving, whatever you do, just keep moving, whether it's, uh, you know, whatever works your boat, really. Um, I've put some examples here, dance, yoga, and, you know, stretching, um, but um, and especially in the fresh air, um, it's massively important. Um, so, um, and then one tip that mentally has helped me tremendously, um, Actually, um, yeah, um, two that I um, that that come up my mind and not in the slide that I keep doing every single day. They are very simple. Don't take time. Super simple is gratitude and kind of um, you know being very intentional as to uh, what you do every day um, to help manage your time as well and control what's going on up here um, so I um, personally uh, write a gratitude um, journal um, um, and um, which which I encourage you to do even if you don't necessarily write on a journal right um, it could be like in your head but the fact of writing it just reinforce and 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 force you to actually put more intention into it and then decide on the three five priorities of the day first thing in the morning I feel they really set the tone for the day and put you more in a situation of control of how you want the day to be as opposed to let the day on you if that makes sense so you're on the day as opposed to let the day on you um one minute audrey one minute yeah so tip six um, is really to try and slow down and restore. Um, that's one thing that I'm not so good at, um, to just to kind of like stop doing <laughs> as much. So that has been a uh, challenge I'm still working on. Um, so just um, going a little bit uh, quicker. So tip seven, just being grateful and opportunistic. So really flip the script. If there is something that does not make you feel good, that you feel is kind of negative, actually there are positive, in a single situation. So how could you turn the situation around so that it actually serves you? Um, and also there is a reference here to gratitude again. Um, there is the magic book that I really loved. You can ask me a digital copy of it. Um, tip number eight, to stay connected. Uh, don't hibernate um, too long like I do very often. And just reach out and be like you are doing on those presentations and groups. Janice's group is fantastic for tip number nine um, in terms of, you know, seeking support and, and accountability and just share and um, share how you feel because everyone is in the same boat in some ways at some point, right? So um, 
and uh, you know maybe if you have some courses that you want to book also like breathing work is also very good meditation anything that rocks your boat um, so you will see that uh, very briefly Janine let me just finish the two last slide literally um, so there is a shared here a typical day I won't have time now to go through it but this is I would say um, and you can ask me or you can share what you would change during the Q&A if you want um, see perhaps this is a structure that might not work for you but if there is anything uh, within that that you're like actually yeah this is really good I want to try it like just pick like one two things um, just so you're not overwhelming yourself putting too many things in place at the same time and then um, let me know how how that goes um, so I wanted to offer you something very special um, only really for the purpose of this presentation um, is a little kind of um, perhaps for those who want to um, improve their nutrition and health um, and invest in themselves that way, um, then if um, you are interested, um, I run some uh, nutrition and health programs and you can get up to 99 euros off. Um, until end of Jan, but I will ask you to uh, book a free call with me, a free 30 minute session with me first in December to see if we are a good fit, um, because um, that's very important for you and for me. Um, so you've got uh, that, that free call already. For those who are not so ready um, for that, then I'm happy to um, offer 30% off some of my nutrition um, plans and um, recipe bundles just until end of December. So contact me for that. And if you're still not ready for any of it, then perhaps you would be happy to um, follow me and Lee for um, daily tips about all of this. Thank you so much for your Sorry. time. Sorry. Thank you, Audrey. That's great, great tips for us to remember. Um, I will share I will get you to put all of your contact details and the offer and everything in this event on on in the group in expat yeah. women. So then sure. all the links and everything. So thank you, Audrey. And now to introduce Lee or Coach Lee as she likes to be <laughs> Gee, do you think you might be a coach? Maybe. Yeah, I, I pretty much live on Zoom these days, so I just don't even bother changing it anymore. <laughs> okay, so Lee is an internationally and French qualified personal trainer, nutrition and lifestyle coach. She helps busy women cut through the chaos of everyday life to lose weight and get strong so they can live an actively awesome life or an awesomely active life even. <laughs> In the body, in a body that they love, we all want that. So she offers in-person and online personal and group fitness and nutrition training. So over to you, Lee. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit um, today about. I just need to move that um, eating and exercise habits and confinement. So. I have um, certainly uh, a lot of elements with Audrey and I overlap. I have um, a little bit of a different take on my coaching, especially when it comes to nutrition. And that I believe that, um, so I coach habits and um, I teach my clients the foundation of nutrition. Um, and then from that foundation, then we work on a foundation of eating habits. And I believe that how you eat is just as, as important as what you eat. So um, it's developing that awareness around your eating and your nutrition habits that's absolutely invaluable. So this is the tool that I and the skills that I try to give the clients that work with me. So I'm going to try my best to um, cover uh, this. I think we can do this in 20 minutes. So we're gonna look at awareness and eating habits and this is pertaining to confinement. Um, I'm gonna give you my top do's for eating in confinement um, and especially going into the holidays and these can really be applied to life in general. But if you really feel like things are a bit out of control in confinement, these are some good things to just be aware of and to practice. 
Um, I'm going to show you some super easy ways to measure portions. So um, again, we want to create that balanced plate of food at each meal. And I'm going to show you a little trick that's super easy. So you don't have to rely on counting calories or weighing, measuring your food, because we all know that may work in the short term, but long term, you're just not going to stick with that. And then I'm going to um, hopefully inspire you to commit to your fitness. So any sort of daily movement and exercise in there. So just to start off with, we're just going to, I'm going to plant a little seed um, before I tell you a little bit more about myself. So do any of these sound familiar um, throughout confinement? Go back and think about first confinement as well, as well as this second one. Do you feel that you're eating out of stress? or eating out of anxiety? Are you craving chocolates, crisp cookies? I, I kind of put every nationality in there because I'm American, so, but I know um, we're from all over. So whatever you wanna call them, crisps, chips, cookies, biscuits, those high sugar, high fat, salty snack foods. Um, cooking and ba baking your favorite comfort foods and then overeating them. Especially if you have kids, I know we've all tried to keep them uh, occupied, especially in the first confinement with baking and that kind of possibly backfired on some of us. Um, eating and snacking out of boredom, overeating at meals, because I guess a lot of us being home now, we're cooking, which is a great thing to get those healthy homemade foods out. But are we tending now because there's an abundance of food around to overeat? Um, are you continuously grazing and snacking throughout the day? Working from home, you know, my kitchen is right there. So the food couldn't be in any closer proximity if I wanted it. So are we spending, you know, our days wandering into the kitchen, nibbling on things and kind of grazing rather than eating our, our standard meals? Nighttime snacking. And I know a lot of my clients struggle with this one. And one thing um, that you may not think about is over drinking. So a lot of times, especially women, we reach, may reach to alcohol and think of it as a self-care. I'm relaxing, it's, uh, this is what I need. But really when it comes to um, overall health and especially um, trying to keep weight off, we really need to dial in on the alcohol consumption. Sorry to say, nobody likes to hear that, especially going into the holidays, but it's true. Okay, so a little bit um, about me, as Janine said, um, I am a uh, internationally qualified fitness instructor, a kettlebell instructor, corrective exercise specialist, and as well as a postnatal uh, fitness expert. Um, my coaching for nutrition comes with a school in Canada called Precision Nutrition. And we work a lot with coaching psychology. So behavior change, um, we feel is the way forward for helping clients achieve sustainable results that they can carry on for the rest of their lives. And I also have 20 year chef experience. That's how I um, got to the South of France. I've lived here for 20 years now. So I was a yacht chef back in, in the days for um, 10 years. And so it's been a great carryover of um, going from chef work into creating healthy recipes. And I absolutely love to share my healthy recipes with my clients. So I'm not just kind of tooting my own horn. I'm gonna bring this um, back into why I'm telling you this. It's because it, all, it wasn't always like this for me. In fact, this was me 12 years ago after the birth of my first child and 22 kilos heavier. So why I'm telling you this is because I do have the professional um, knowledge and experience, but with that also, I bring my own journey and my own experiences of years and years, 20 years of crash diets and really abusing my body to lose weight. And then I gain it back and I would try something more drastic and more extreme, lose it again, gain it back. So this is a big thing for me. It becomes um, very personal with working with my clients because I know now the tools and the skills that work to have that 
long-term weight loss, which as Janine said, is everyone's goal. And that's part of the reason why um, I look to habits to change because we can all go on a short-term crash diet and lose weight. But the challenge is then what do we do when that diet ends? What do we do when that trainer stops telling us what to eat at, at every meal? We have to think for ourselves. And this is what I try to give my clients are those tools and skills. I keep saying that over and over, I know, um, to think for yourself, to decide what's right for you on an individual le level, what's right for your body, what's right for your life. Same thing with um, nutrition as well as the exercise. So you decide what's right for you because you now have the tools that, uh, of that foundation so you can stay on track and in control of your own health for the rest of your life. So let's get into it. So let's talk a little bit about confinement. We have this perfect storm where we're all sitting in front of Zoom a lot and working from home. So we've taken out our everyday movement um, and potentially we're eating more. And if we go back to that list, think about, you know, out of stress, anxiety, boredom, proximity to food, whatever it may be, because there's a, an abundance of food, it makes us feel better. We're using it as a way to self-soothe. Um, whatever it may be, we're now in this situation where potentially we're moving less unless we have um, we make ourselves go out and do, I don't really like that term, make ourselves unless we encourage ourselves to go out and do purposeful exercise, we're getting very little movement in and possibly eating more. So this is kind of more or less a recipe for weight gain. So we have to take that action to be more in control of our nutrition as well as our fitness. It does, I know it's, it's a, a hard thing to hear, but it all does come down to us individually and to make that decision for ourselves. So let's look at, these are my top do's of eating during confinement. So again, it's going to overlap a lot with what Audrey had said, because we um, have a lot of similar coaching styles. So lots of fresh veggies, especially greens at every meal. Eat fresh fruit in moderation, tend to go for, I know they're not in season now, but um, for like a lighter glycemic load uh, fruit. So that would be berries, grapes, apples, pears. Apples and pears are in season now, rather than something that's um, higher in fructose, like bananas, mangoes, that sort of thing. Um, eating protein with every meal, not only will, as you're exercising, help your body repair and build lean muscle mass, but it will keep you fuller longer. If you tend to be hungry, and want to snack in the afternoon, try having a portion of protein, lean protein with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and see if those cravings don't curb all by themselves, especially to um, snacking in the evening. Just keeping yourself a bit fuller with protein, it takes longer for your body to digest protein, it takes more energy, so, and it's not chocked full of calories. So this can be a good thing to help you stay fuller longer, uh, as well as um, your higher fiber vegetables. Okay, so we want to aim for three meals a day, if that's right for you. Again, it all goes down to individuality. Um, I would encourage you to leave about four hours in between meals. That is about what your body needs to be able to digest a meal and then um, start to tell you with its hormonal signals, like your um, hunger signals will naturally come after four hours. So we want to, in this time, try to tune into our bodies and eat actually when we're hungry and not just eat because it's a meal time. So if you kind of wait four hours, see how that works for you. And again, we wanna go, um, to those balanced meals. So we're looking at protein, veggies, healthy fats, and whole grains and starchy carbs in moderation. And especially stick to homemade whole foods. 
use this time to try some new recipes. I'm always submitting recipes on my Facebook page and on my website. So go in there and try. I have lots of healthy versions of things. Try something new um, and use maybe the extra time you have at home to do some more cooking. Keep up on your hydration, mainly water and stick to calorie free drinks. Um, so, you know, if you're used to sugary coffees and um, uh, sodas, things like that, just kind of eliminate those and stick to mainly water, tea, anything that's uh, a calorie free drink. This is if, if you only pick one thing off the whole list, this can have almost the most impact on your uh, nutrition and weight loss is to eat slowly at every meal and eat just until full. So listen to your body. Don't go to that point where your tummy hurts and you're stuffed and you know you've had too much. You wanna get to about 80% full and then just stop at that meal. And then um, my favorite one is just to slow down, take this time, sit down with your loved ones. If they're with you, sit down with your family and have a distraction-free meal. At meal times, uh, me with my kids, um, there's no phones, there's no TV, there's no nothing. They're just, we sit, we talk, we enjoy our meal and we concentrate on the food that we have. So same thing with lunch too. If you um, tend to eat your lunch in front of the computer, why not just try sitting at the table, no phone, no computer, no tablet, just you and your food. Okay, so those are my uh, top do's. I'm gonna give you some pitfalls to avoid. So don't even buy the high calorie, low nutrient, AKA junk foods. Just don't bring them into your house. It's that simple. And no matter who argues with you, stick to your guns on this one because I guarantee you if they're in your house, you're gonna eat them. Someone's gonna eat them and nobody in your household needs to eat these foods. Try your best not to snack or eat between meals. Because again, it's, it just disrupts your whole system of um, um, your um, hormones that tell you when you're satisfied and tell you when you're hungry. So if you're having a meal and then eating snacks and then having a meal, you have no idea if you're actually hungry or not. So just eliminate those snacks. Plus it's a lot of extra food at the end of the day that your body probably doesn't need, especially if you're not moving as much. So just try your best to eliminate those snacks and really dial in to what your body needs. If you're truly hungry, then you go for real food and um, hopefully at a meal time. Um, don't stand up eating in your kitchen don't eat standing up in your kitchen. One, because you're not paying any attention to the food that you're eating. So ask yourself, if you find yourself doing that, why am I standing or moving around and eating at the same time? That's when we're just totally disconnected. We have no idea what we're putting in our mouths and our bodies at that time. Um, okay, don't eat after 8 p.m. So this again goes to the nighttime snacking, ties into what Audre was telling you about your body needs to go in rest and digest mode. And um, so sleep is part of that. If you go to bed with a full tummy, rather than prioritizing sleep, your body is gonna prioritize digestion. So let your body rest. That's a time it needs to recuperate. It doesn't need to be in a prime digestion mode. So just cut your eating off um, at 8 p.m. And again, saves you so much um, food intake. It's just, you really have to think about, do I need this extra food? Do I need this nighttime snack? And again, we're gonna go um, to avoid high sugar, high fat foods, especially foods that are masquerading as healthy foods. Sweetened yogurts have almost just as much sugar as ice cream, um, but they look nice and healthy. So we think that we're grabbing a healthy snack. Uh, granola bars, pretzels, salted nuts, all those things that may, we may think because of marketing and advertising that they're healthy, but they're not really adding much value to our bodies as far as nutrients. So sorry if I'm talking a mile a minute here, I'm just trying to get um, everything in. So this is a very simple way of creating that balanced 
uh, plate of food. So this is a standard for women. It's a little bit different for men and it may differ for you depending on your activity levels. If you are a um, high level exerciser, you may need more um, portions, more food, but on a general level for women, this is pretty good. So we're looking at that one uh, portion of protein. So that's a palm, um, one, fist size of vegetables. And in fact, if it's a green vegetable or a low, um, a non-starchy vegetable, so we're talking broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, courgette, you can really fill up your plate and um, really eat as much as, of those vegetables as you need. And then um, complex carbohydrates or starchy uh, vegetables, such as sweet potato, um, squash, that sort of thing, we're going to have just a cupped handful. And then a serving of fat, if you think about your thumb, so that's going to be for our entire plate. So that's going to be coconut oil, olive oil, um, avocado. There's, I have in, in my courses as well, we, we teach you the list of, of what is a lean protein, the types of vegetables that are best choices. So what I want you to think about is food is on a continuum. We have good choices and we have worse choices. There's no, uh, sorry, better choices and worse. There's no good or bad. There's no morality in food. If you eat something that's not healthy, it does not make you a bad person. So think about that continuum and just think about making a better choice. Think about where that food falls on that continu continuum of better or worse. And just try to stay on that better side of the continuum. So that's what I teach you in the in my coaching and my courses is again laying that foundation of good nutrition, and then we incorporate the habits on top of that. So I'm almost done here. Um, so this is where um, I come in now as a, a trainer. So we make a commitment to our fitness just like any other appointment and we keep it. I don't know about you, but I don't make a dentist appointment and then think, oh, I have a dentist appoint appointment at three, but I don't really feel like going, so I'm gonna skip it. So same thing with your fitness and your exercise. You make the commitment and then you keep that commitment to yourself. And it's extremely important because we have lost even our steps of shopping and walking to the car and going to the office, we have to make um, a commitment to purposeful movement. So that could be doing online training. I offer, I have my group, we've, because I train a small group um, around the Mouchon, Belbon area. So um, my group that I usually train in person, we've gone online, we've just adjusted and we do things a little bit differently, but everybody shows up still. Um, if nothing else, um, on your phone, uh, especially if you have an iPhone, you'll see in your health app, you can count your steps every day. So aim to get 10,000 steps, and that takes roughly an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes. So you don't need that block of time. Just do a half hour in the morning, 15 minutes at lunchtime, another half hour in the evening just to keep your body working. And then ideally, of course, as a trainer, I'm gonna tell all women how important strength training is. This, and I'm not talking about bodybuilding, but I'm talking about keeping your lean muscle mass. Lean muscle mass is metabolically active in a good way. So is fat, but lean muscle mass allows you to use the food and the energy that you're intaking during the day to run your body it's going your food is going to go to repair and rebuild that lean mass so i'm talking about your muscles and it helps keep your metabolism revved up so the more lean mass you have the more you're helping yourself with the food you eat your body is going to use it rather than store it um, so strength training twice a week and then um, for women I think it's great, um, high intensity interval training, um, two, three times a week maximum for about a half an hour, plus steady state for one time a week. 
Um, there's a place for steady state. Women tend to want to do more steady state exercise. What I mean by this is jogging or cycling. Um, it has its place, but not to overtake strength training and not to overtake a high intensity interval training session because you're going to get a lot more impact out of the strength training and the um, hit sessions, especially if you're trying to lose weight, than you will out of the steady state. And then don't forget about you need to recover your body. You need some rest days. You need recovery days. And that would include yoga, Pilates, walks in nature, going out with your friends, family, just getting out, being active, but doing things that, um, that you enjoy that are low impact. And then we want to think about incorporating movement every day um, and moving every few hours. So again, if you're at your computer a lot during the day, set a timer every hour, every hour and a half, get up, do something. So as a kettlebell instructor, I'll set my timer if I'm doing, um, preparing a lot for coaching and I'm on my computer a lot and I do uh, 50 kettlebell swings. And then in another hour and a half, it goes off and I might do, you know, whatever exercise. It, it doesn't even have to be as complicated as put a song on and dance and just get up and move your body. So that's all really that matters at the end of the day is just make an effort to get that purposeful movement in. So again, we're trying to balance our exercise and our fitness habits with our eating and nutrition habits and then our lifestyle and self-care. So that is it for me and I thank you. And again, if you have any questions, you can always reach me by email. We're gonna do a little Q and A here, um, but definitely reach out on social media and um, through email if you have any follow-up questions that you want to talk to me about. And as Janine said, I'll post um, my special offer just for the Mojo Circle um, inside the event. And please let me know if you have any questions on that as well. Okay, back to you, Janine. So now we're going to go into a guided meditation to focus on what we've just learned about and you know what and what we want to do for ourselves so what we're going to take out of this presentation and do for ourselves from here so i invite you all to sit back comfortably in your seat or wherever you're sitting lay down if you're on the couch but get comfortable and take a close your eyes and take a big, deep breath in. And out. And now take another bigger, deeper breath in and really push your stomach out so that you are breathing in, pushing the stomach out, and then, and then letting it go and as you do that feel the air moving into your body feel it moving around and now we're going to check in with the body and i invite you to check in and find out where you feel any tension let's go to the top of the head to the back of the head where my Many of us carry our tension to our forehead and our jaw and our neck and sort of move it around a little bit, get some air in there, breathe into it and invite those muscles to relax. Now into the shoulders where we hold, where everyone tends to hold a lot of attention there too move them round, shrug them up and down, breathe the air into there and go all the way down your arms to your fingers, wiggle your fingers a little bit and just breathe relaxation into it. And then back to your body, around your chest, 
around our heart, you know, into our abdomen. Are you holding anything tight there? Is your gut holding on to some tension for you? And what about your buttocks? Give them a bit of a wiggle. Release those big gluteus maximus. And down into your thighs. Take notice of your calves and to your toes and wiggle them a little bit. And now take one more big deep breath, push your gut out and out with a sigh. <sighs> now we're going to open up our chakras. We've got our base chakra around the bottom, lower pelvic region, and that's where we look at our physical body and our physical environment. And just imagine that opening up like a lotus flower. And then up to our mental state, the second chakra, and that, and I imagine that yellow flower opening up. And then up into our solar plexus and our, and our emotional chakra, and that's an orange lotus flower that's opening. And to our heart, that's beautiful green. Open that up. And our throat chakra, where we speak, where we speak our truth. Our third eye, which is our intuition. It's a light blue and, and the dark blue and our crown chakra, which is the dark purple. And above our crown chakra is a beautiful light, bright white. And that is shining in through our crown chakra, down th through our whole body. This, it's going all the way down through our legs, into our feet and down into the ground below us. And it's grounding us, making us feel more relaxed, more easy. And then that light is coming back up and it's particularly surrounding our heart and giving healing to our heart. It's giving healing to our whole body. Send it to whatever part of your body you want to heal or you feel needs some pain relief or just some extra care and attention. And leave that light surrounding your heart. And now think about the presentation from today. What struck you the most? What was the most important tip for you? And then think about, well, actually don't think about, use your intuition through your third eye to ask what holds you back the most as far as your health and well-being. What is the biggest obstacle, block, or thing that you need to deal with the most. And just go with what's coming to you and address that. And say, thank you for letting me know. And now ask your intuition again, what do I need to do? I've listened to this presentation today. I've taken in lots of good tips. What do I need to do to get the best results for my own health and nutrition and well-being on a holistic basis? And take a moment to just let those thoughts come to you. and start putting together your action list. What do you want to bring into your life? What are the behaviors that you want to let go of? 
What are the behaviors that you want to adopt and do more of? So think of it in terms of what do you want to stop doing? What do you want to start doing? And what do you want to change the way you're doing or do more of? And take a minute to think about those things. Create your action list. And when you think you've got that done, you've got that organized, thank your guides for giving you this insight and for helping you identify what you want to do to improve your health and well-being moving forward. And then just gradually bring your attention back into your room, back to the seat that you're sitting on, back into your body. You can keep that beautiful white healing light in your body and around your heart and think of that any time that you need motivation and stimulation to do the actions that you want and when you come out of this this meditation I recommend that you take a moment to write down what your action list was to write down what you want to stop doing what you want to start doing what you want to do more of and what you want to change and bring yourself back into your body. And when you're ready, open your eyes. So thank you for your time. That's it for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed that meditation and got a lot out of it. Don't forget to take a moment to write down what your actions are on a piece of paper or something. It's better if you handwrite them and put them up on your desk so that you remind yourself or on the fridge so you remind yourself every day what is it you've decided that you want to do and change in your life. So thank you very much. It's Janine Sonsi from Club Mojo Circle. Um, it's a club for expat women who live in France or English speaking women who live in France. And you can find us at mojocircle.com or any of the links below. And I'll put some links below for the speakers as well. Okay, have a great day. Bye.